A self-described super connector and convener, Sheena Collier seeks to build a community and a sense of belonging for black Bostonians through her organization, Boston While Black. And Sheena joins us today to talk about the mission of the organization and the upcoming Boston While Black Summit. Hi, Sheena, how are you Hi, doing today? Hi, thank you for having me. Good to see you. Good to see so you So you created this organization because you was a non-native Bostonian uh, struggled to build a network to find connections here in the city. Tell it what it was like to move here yeah. from someplace else and to try to find your way. Yeah, so I'm originally from Albany, New York, but I was at um, Spelman College in Atlanta and came up here to go to grad school at Harvard. And as you said, I um, didn't find Boston the easiest place to navigate. I think that for many reasons, not I don't even think it's just specific to black folks. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes a city that it's hard to get plugged in. And so I came here, you know, grad school is also really intense and I just didn't, I was like, I'm not staying here. <laughs> like I, I, I haven't found, I was at um, Harvard School of Education. Okay, it's important to mention Harvard. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> so I, um, you know, so like a lot of people that come here for school or work, I was ready to leave immediately, but I ended up getting a job here and mm -hmm. was what initially kept me here. Um, and then, you know, fast forward, that was 18, 19 years ago just over time, I realized that other people were having this experience and I started to do stuff on my own to create community for myself and others, which eventually led to Boston Wall Black. So how would you describe life for black professionals in, in Boston? And one of the things that the city is is trying to address is, is the nightlife here. Yep. Nightlife exists in other cities for yep. uh, African-Americans. Um, uh, uh, you know, Boston's known as a city that shuts down uh, early. Uh, how has that affected people's desire to live here? Yeah, yeah. I love the nightlife conversation, particularly helping to expand it beyond, because sometimes people hear it and they're like, oh, people want to drink and go to bars. And I think it's more than that. I'm at a stage in my life where I want to go to lounges or I want to be able to have really nice restaurants to frequent. And I think that what ends up happening, you know, one, you're dealing with Boston being really expensive. Um, and then on top of that, people are like, I there's not even a way for me to really enjoy the city. And so the nightlife entertainment, the access to venues is a really big, I love that the city is really focusing on that because I think it's something that will help to make us more competitive mm -hmm. um, and really attract and keep talent because we do have a great job market is what kept me. Um, particularly in, at that time I was in education, but people need things to do outside of work. Yeah, and it's not about drinking and partying, it's having a place where you can socialize right. with Gather, other people. Right, gather, yeah, yeah. And, that, and that spans age ranges, and I think that because we have, we're such a college town, you know, that part is addressed. You know, we have that scene, but what about when people age out of that? What are the options? What are the things for you to do um, yeah. to be able to socialize So talk others? about what you think the city does well and what needs more improvements mm. uh, when it comes to the lives of black Bostonians. Yeah, what I, as far as doing well, so actually when I came here in 2004, there were a lot of efforts that were happening at that mm -hmm. time. Um, a lot of people were doing things like, they were calling them friendly takeovers. There were things mm -hmm. for, though I wasn't 30 yet, but 30 plus that I was going to. Um, and I think that black folks here in Boston for way, you know, obviously before I got here, have been finding ways to create community and connect. Mm -hmm. uh, I think what the challenge has been is those things being sustainable. And whether it's either the person that's leading it moves on to do something else that is so centered around a person or um, some of the access issues that we have around liquor licenses or permits or things like that. And so you see things fizzle out. So in my 20 years, I've seen things that were really robust and fizzled out. So, so this comes back to you and why you started Boston Wild Black. Exactly. You've taken this on. Uh, you have coming up the Boston Wild Black Summit and some sessions include a range of topics. Biotech and life sciences is the future of Boston. Where's the black talent? Yep. Uh, all the way to black joy, expression and access. And you have some great speakers lined up. Tell us uh, more about the summit and, and who can attend. Yeah, so this is our second year doing the How to Boston Wild Black Summit. And the, the reason why we launched it, you know, there's been particularly since 2020, this intense focus on DEI efforts and equity um, as a particularly as it pertains to black people. And I think we're already seeing a lot of that stuff kind of waning or um, some of that attention going away. And so we really wanted to create this space where black people and non-black allies are able to have two concentrated days to talk about what it means to be black navigating a city, all the way from your professional life to your social life to your dating life. Um, and so we have conversations around all of those things. Uh, and it's just a, it's a, some of the feedback we heard from people last year was just how much they 
um, felt good being in a space just surrounded by black people during mm -hmm. the workday. A lot mm -hmm. of people don't get to experience that in their companies. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of corporations are sending their employees, um, I think as a way for them for prof professional yeah. development and a way to retain them. And you told me you have 700 people? Coming? We have over 700 people coming. Um, we have about 20 sessions that are happening. We're bringing Pinky Cole, who's the keynote speaker. She's an amazing um, black woman entrepreneur who uh, founded Slutty Vegan and she has built this $100 million empire um, over the last couple of years. So it's going to be a great day. So where should people go if they are interested in becoming members of Boston while black or attending the summit? Yeah, summit tickets, um, get them now, summit.bostonwhileblack.com. And then for overall Boston While Black is bostonwhileblack.com. Um, we're doing membership right at on site at the summit. And then we uh, typically open membership every couple of months. Okay, Sheena, thanks for being here. Thank We're going to link to all this information on our website as well. Thank you. Uh, WCVB.com slash CityLine. And uh, I think it's going to be a fabulous weekend. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Thank you for And everybody, me. thanks to you for watching. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at CityLine5. And you can follow me on Twitter at Karen Holmes Ward. Have a great afternoon.